we did it again. I had some more Lantanotus bornensis. It is pretty cool. This is already the fourth year breeding them a little bit more clutches, which is really cool. And I think it shows that this species does really well in captivity. So maybe interesting to note that these eggs were laid on the 30th of July. They were actually found by my sister while I was gone. And quite interesting, the female started to eat her eggs when disturbed. Now the question of course is if she just laid them, maybe those were infertile eggs, so she was regaining nutrients, or it was a reaction to being disturbed. Anyway, she ate about one or two before my sister could uh, yeah, prevent any more from being eaten. She took out a total of 10 eggs, so the female laid at least 12 eggs. And of those, eight were fertile. Now, two of those eggs died during the incubation period. So I had six left and eventually six of those hatched, but one died during hatching. As mentioned, they were laid on the 30th of July and they hatched in the first full week of November. So actually they started the week early. So some hatched already at the 28th of October, but the last one hatched uh, at 6 or 7 November. So the incubation period was about 90 to 98 days, which is about average with temperatures that I incubate them, which is 26 degrees. When the last young hatched and I took all of them out of the incubation box, I noticed that two or three actually still had a little bit of the umbilical cord or their yolk sac attached. That is the reason they are still in a box with a little bit of moist paper towel so they can heal up before I put them in their eventual raise up boxes or however you want to call those. So the reason I think these young still had a little bit of the yolk sac or the umbilical cord left on them is because I moved the incubator. So the eggs that these come from were laid during a very hard summer. I believe it was about 30 to 32 degrees, even all the way up until the end of August, which caused a problem because that way my rooms also get pretty warm and you don't want to hatch these eggs on too high of a temperature. They're looking good. So I actually had the incubator standing in the living room. But of course, when the living room got a little bit cooler, the incubator needed to work a little bit harder, which was okay, there's a thermostat on there. Um, but I think, because I moved them back into this room, because here the room was more stable, that it had a little bit of a bump and that impacted their, their hatch rate. Anyway, we're gonna check on them today. Yeah, this one is not ready for sure. The other ones are already in a little tub with water. I will show you how I'm raising them. Um, but these, I'm just gonna, yeah, very simply, until that yolk sac is completely absorbed of umbilical cord or whatever, just that this section is completely healed, I think it's smart to keep them on paper. And this is a method you can use with a lot of reptiles, I've seen it done with a lot of turtles, that you just put them in a little box in their incubator. Some paper towel, no moss, nothing that can like get stuck to the open wound, you know, or irritate it. And this water is already up to temperature. We make it nice and wet. Look at that incredible animal. Now this one uh, hatched the latest and as you can see, it's still a bit open or quite a bit actually. So we want to make sure it's already gone down but we want to make sure that we keep that clean so this one is going to go back in this little box it's moving it's active i'm not worried about it but i am going to give it some time so these two have healed up a whole lot better as you can see nice and active i don't want to handle them too much and they will try to bite actually these young they will defend themselves which is really cool So these can go in their little box. So what I've done with these boxes, as you can see, there is a filtration mat that they can get on top of if they want to get out of the water but still want to be a bit humid. There's also one over here. I like this filtration mat so I can 
you flush it out very easily but it's also very light and in case there's something wrong with the animals you know I don't like to waste stuff but if needed I could throw it away it's no problem it's very light so if they get on the side or underneath it it's not going to be a problem I think we're going to cut this one a little bit shorter and as you can see there's also a water section now these two have been in the this box for two or three days now as you can see they're both in the water one with this hat on the filtration mat and that's pretty much how they like to hang out now normally I raise them separately but I see so many people raise them in small groups then I want to try and see how that works can we still focus there we go they're so cool they will not move a lot you know sometimes you're like almost worried but they're they're active strong little young now as these here's the little high just some cork it'll stay in the water a bit and that's okay all of these young have found a home already so that's great also the previous clutch which I forgot to show you also already found a new home but yeah isn't that a cool creature as these still are absorbing their, their yolk sac a little bit, I will wait to feed them in about a week. Getting them to feed is normally not a big issue unless the temperature is not stable. And that is why I'm raising them in the incubator. It might be cool to show you the incubator I hatched them in. It's a wine cooler. Yeah, I took out all the, all the yeah, electrical parts that I didn't need. There's a heating strip all the way on the back. Here you can see some more boxes that I use if needed. There's a small top there where I put water in so the humidity rises a bit. There's a probe which is underneath this shelf that I made out of air crate. And uh, yeah, that's where I place the young. I don't want to bother them too much of course, they're young. I still wanted to show them to you because this is just so cool. They're amazing creatures, it's always great to hatch them. And it's also cool that still, you know, a lot of people really like them. Time to put them back. Close the door. And that's about it for this exciting news when it comes to the young Lantanotes. So proud. Now, when it comes to the adults and especially their setups, they're doing great. You know, since the last checkup, I really like how it looks. The plants are doing well. I have to cut a lot. Um, there is still a lot of organics. I'm now exchanging the water every two weeks and taking out a lot. But all the decaying wood yeah, really has an impact. And I don't really mind. But the problem is when I feed them, it gets really murky. So over time I want to change this. But winter is coming so I got to prep for that. And then when all the turtles are in hibernation. Then I can yeah, start to focus on this room because I do have some ideas and plants now here in this terrarium I also have some plants standing ready I actually got some ant plants inspired by the podcast some Indonesian ferns the ficus filosa all that stuff and all those plants are also from Borneo so those are all going to be integrated in this or either uh, upgraded version before we are going to end this video I want to show you but especially those who have been following the channel for many years, I want to show you all something absolutely incredible. I want to show you guys what I'm hiding in the quarantine room. Look at that beast. But uh, more on that for a later video. Thanks for watching.